as we've been doing our, our upper body exercises, just um, uh, remembering that you can be in this posture in two ways, either in Sukhasana with your crisscross, or I like to start off also by taking my blocks and I, I, I'm here like this, or I can even put my knees on something and then put the blocks, like you're gonna sit, like I normally sit, and now I'm seated like this. My torso's up now, and so think about it. As you're doing a curl, you're able to come into that posture of tucking the tailbone under, engaging the core fully, and then coming up to do the curl. So that's just on offer to you. You don't have to come into that, but just to know that there's different ways of accessing it, and you can try it, and then, and then you know drop it or keep it and and just to know that that's it's available to you letting somebody else in so i'm going to go ahead and do that but let's let's just start off uh in however seated posture you would like to be and close the eyes if that feels okay and safe to do so and then if it doesn't then to uh, just bring your gaze a few feet out in front of you taking an inhale in and an exhale out Feeling the rise and the fall of the chest. Gratitude for this day. Gratitude for this breath. Breathing in and breathing out. Knowing that you've already arrived. All you have to do is be yourself fully and authentically. We don't have to run after anything. We already contain the whole cosmos. We simply return to ourselves through mindfulness, through movement, through the breath. We touch the peace and the joy that's already present within us in this moment. Breathing in, I have arrived. And breathing out, I am enough. As you inhale in, and exhale out. Opening the eyes, let's stretch just a little bit, arms down beside us, inhaling as we rise with deep inhale. Clasp the fingertips together, steeple chase and send them up toward the ceiling. Hug the elbows in toward the temples and then gently start to wave the hands slightly forward so you're rounding the back, hollowing out the belly and then coming back up as you inhale and then exhale down. So hopefully that felt okay, rolling the shoulders backwards and then forwards. Inhale and lift the lift, inhaling. And as we exhale, let's twist over to the left side, taking our right hand to our left knee, left hand right behind us. And then as we inhale, really lifting up the torso, taking a good deep inhale in and then exhale out as we belly breath. Ringing out, looking over our left shoulder if that feels okay. And then we'll rise, reaching up on the inhale. And exhale as we come over to the right side. So drawing the torso up, twisting from the belly, not from the shoulders, but we take a look over toward the right side of the room, noticing our surroundings, staying present on our mats, feeling our bodies make contact and being present with where we are drilled down right here on our mats. Good deep inhale and exhale and gratitude for that. Inhale as we rise, reach up and extend both arms coming up and exhale out halfway. W shape the arms, open up the chest, the heart, to the possibilities of this practice today and this day. Reach out and extend. So we're opening up, giving us ourselves and others a giant hug. And now we're going to come in on the exhale and then inhale one breath. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Good deep inhale. And exhale, bring the hands behind the back and just clasp them together. Or maybe you're grabbing your forearms. Again, we're stretching, we're opening up. Take your left ear down to your left shoulder or nod your head down toward your left breast or left knee. Again, stretching. Inhale, come back. Exhale, right ear down toward the right shoulder. And then nod your head down toward your right breast or right knee. And then come back to neutral, remove that bind. Bring your hands to your laps and then if it feels safe and okay to draw your head up toward the ceiling, 
Take your head up and then shake your head no. So you feel the back of the skull make contact with the top of the spine. If it feels okay. Sometimes it feels a little crunchy. Bring it back up, good deep inhale. And as you exhale, gently lower the head down toward the chest. Shake the head from side to side. And then come back up, good deep inhale in. And then exhale out. Grab your low or high weights. So we're gonna, I'm gonna grab my high weights. We wanna start ourselves up. So I was just showing you that posture. So sit the body up tall, take the navel back toward the spine, roll the shoulders back, hug the elbows into the body. Now you've got some good alignment. You're using your core strength. So you're dipping that tailbone, you're scooping it up, inhaling, and then you're engaging your core. And now let's come up for 10, nine, eight, so we're curling slowly, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Keep the weights up. And now we're gonna punch up, three, two, one, come down, punch up, Three, navel back toward the spine. One, and come down. So again, start off by scooping the tailbone under so you're engaging your core. Come up and pulse for three, two, one, and down. Pulse up for three, two, one, and down. This time come straight up and then just hold it out. And now we're gonna pulse up for three, two, one, and come down. So you can just kind of land that weight on your shoulders, you can rest it. And then we're gonna come up to your, you're making that uh, parallel to the mat. And then we're gonna come up. So now you're using the outer part of the arm to make that motion and then come down and let it rest. We're gonna go one more time now that we know what we're doing. We're gonna lift up and go one, two, three. And you're breathing. Sometimes we hold our breath when we start to do things that are a little bit like, hmm, I don't know about this. <laughs> One, I noticed that with patience and come down. Now we're gonna come out and then come back. And then we're gonna come out and come back. If you needed to add your low weights right now, do it because we're gonna use those low weights in just a minute anyway. So just know that those are available to you. Come out and back or if you wanna really make the guns bigger today, here we go, we're gonna use those high weights. <laughs> we were all kind of showing our, our guns today, or I was. <laughs> Not in a uh, regulatory sort of way, just I'm kind of amazed because we've really been doing a lot with our days together and uh, we're all getting stronger. And we're gonna be doing our two minute plank again today, which was really, really a great achievement yesterday. I felt really good afterwards and a little sore in the middle of the night. <laughs> and we're gonna go one more. And back, great job. Come on down, Ooh, that was uh, a little intense, yeah? So we're gonna just roll the shoulders back, we're stretching. So as I was lying in bed this morning, I was thinking about the muscles here, just right under here. So we're gonna be actually, I didn't say tennis ball, but uh, I think we will get the tennis ball out today and, and do a little massaging since we're doing the upper body. But that's kind of what I was thinking. So with that in mind, um, taking your low weights now, and here we are uh, with our pulling the, the, the weights up, and then let's come out and then come back in. Now set yourself up. So you're rolling the shoulders back, bringing the shoulders down from away from the ears, tucking the tailbone under, engaging your core, and then we're coming out and then coming back. And we're coming out and then back. And then we're coming out. And we're breathing. How great to be strong and be able to do this together. And let's go for three more. And two. And one. Great, now flip the weights over, and now we're gonna pulse for six, slow the tempo, five. We're just holding the weights up, 
four. We don't have to death grip them. Three, <laughs> two, and one. And now we're gonna, like you're gonna hold the weights up and now we're gonna pulse for six, five, you should be feeling it. Four, breathe, three, if you feel any fatigue, stop, two, and one. Now go down and go down and up. Five, four, I'm feeling it. Three, breathe, two, and one. Come all the way down. Wow. All right. Reach up. Good deep inhale. Take your right hand in between your shoulder blades. Gently catch that left elbow with your right with your right elbow with your left hand, and then let's head over to the left side. If you want, you can raise that right arm up now just for a deeper stretch. And then come back and we're gonna switch it out. Take your left elbow and then head over to the right side. If you want, draw that left arm up for a deeper stretch and then come back. Let's come into Garudasana arms. So we're gonna take our right arm over our left, catch your shoulders, this could be you. And then you can draw the elbow up today or come down just for a deeper stretch and then round the back. Yeah. Or if you wanna bind it up, you could bind it up into your eagle arms and breathe here. And again, if you wanna hollow out the belly and start to take a tiny bow, you can, we're just stretching here. Unwind and take your left arm on top of your right, hold the shoulders, draw the elbows up. So we're just stretching here and come down. You can round if you'd like or bind it up, come into your eagle arms. You can even gently move from the left, right side of the room to the left side of the room for a stretch and then unwind and come down. Just roll the shoulders back and forward. Great job. And now we're gonna come on to hands and knees coming into tabletop posture. So let's set ourselves up. We've got our weights on either side of our mat. We have something to pad our knees with. Gonna do a little tabletop and then we'll come into our plank. And I need to have my stopwatch, so let me grab that. So come into your plank plus your, uh, your tabletop posture. And we'll start off with a few cat cows. So the hands are starfished in front of us. Our knees are hip width distance apart. And we'll take a couple of inhales. As we sway the back, take a look up with eyes and chin. Yesterday we did abs, so you might feel your abs right now. And on the exhale, we're gonna round the back. We're gonna tempt the fingertips, sway from the left side to the right side, left side to the right side, and then pad the hands, inhaling. And then on the exhale, round the back. Inhale to sway and exhale to round, inhale, and exhale. Come back to stillness here. We're going to take our left foot out and push back on that left calf. I want you to have your low weight up at the right corner of your mat or your high weight, your choice. It's your practice today. You come up onto the ball of the feet. We're just stretching here, push back on that calf if that feels okay. Come up onto the shoelaces part of the feet as you bend the toes and then push back again. As you push back, squeeze the left butt cheek. So you engage that left butt, left hamstring, left quadricep, and then push up. And you're looking down at the mat and you're breathing. We're just stretching. Take your left heel over toward the left side of the mat. Take your right hand off. You can dip that left hip down toward the floor, maybe, if that feels good to you. And then we're gonna windshield wiper the left heel over to the right corner of the mat, right hand comes down. We're just stretching, reach up and extend with that left arm. We're coming into our side angle. Left foot is padded on the mat. 
So you feel it's per, it's it's parallel to the back of the mat as you rise up with that left hand. Take the left arm up and over for a nice stretch. Oh, that feels good from the left fingertips down to the left outer foot. Good breath in. As we exhale, we're gonna lower down. We're just going right over to the other side. We're stretching. Take our right foot out toward the right, right back of the mat, and just push back. As you come up, squeeze it, come up onto the ball of the feet and then the shoelaces, bend the toes. Free on your mat, move back with that heel. Make a little play up and back on the mat and then take the right heel over toward the right corner of the mat as you take your left hand to your hip. You can start to dip into that right hip. Breathe, feel that nice stretch. As we breathe into tight spaces that we might feel, left hand comes to the mat, we're gonna kick stand out that left foot, pad the right foot, reach up with your right hand, rise up as you rise, reach up. Good deep inhale, take that right arm up and over the body for a nice stretch. Breathe here, good morning. And then we're gonna take that right hand down, come back into tabletop. We're taking our left foot out, grabbing our right weight at the top of our right mat. We're gonna keep that left, that right weight uh, vertical, and we're gonna just lift up. So you're just holding that right weight. So we're just adding load to this bird dog. That's what we're doing, that's all. You can gently take your left hand out toward the left side of your mat so you have a little more strength and stability with that kickstand. And we're breathing here as we lengthen. The toes come down with the left foot. So you're gently pulling back, your heel toward the back of the mat as you reach and lengthen with your right arm. And now let's pause for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold that, lengthen. Good, take a good deep breath in and out. And now let's drop it down. Gently, slowly switch it out. Left hand to that left corner with the, with the weight. Right foot comes out toward the right corner of the mat, and then we lift it up. And we're holding it here, and we're lengthening that right heel, and the toes are down toward the mat so that we find better alignment and we're not hiking up that right leg. And we're reaching and lengthening with our left arm. Our head is down and we're focused on our breath. Good deep inhale, exhale. Lift and lengthen and let's pause for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Come on down. And now we'll come into either child's pose or puppy pose on a hot sauna. So your choice, you can take your knees out toward the edges of the mat, sink the buttocks back toward the heels, or keep the legs hip width and sits apart and start to sink the heart low. As we fan the hands out in front of us, and lengthen the arms. Our forearms are off the mat on this one, just so that we can really get a good stretch for all the weights and load that we're adding to our practice today. Now remember, you can add in your pelvic floor here if you want to, either loosening or engaging by taking a good deep inhale in, and as you exhale, either tightening up or just relaxing. So you choose how you feel and what you need with your pelvic floor if you wanted to add that to your practice. Breathing in and then on the exhale, if you want to engage it, you're tightening up pelvic floor muscles. If you want, or just relaxing it. Some of us need to do that. Reach and lengthen, tend your fingertips like you're gonna play the piano and notice what's happening now from the base of the skull going down along the shoulders and then all the way to the shoulder heads, and then just beyond that, shoulder blades. Maybe you're feeling a little something, which feels hopefully very good. And maybe you can take a little sway from side to side. So you feel the strength of your fingertips. We, our fingers are so vital to what we do and how we're able to move around in our world, right? So just feeling the strength of those fingertips. And then we're gonna pad the hands again and walk our hands over toward the right side of our mat, we're going to reach and lengthen now. We're going to take a good breath in and take our left arm off the mat. That's going to take some effort. And then the left arm is going to come back down again. Sink into that stretch. Let's come back to your midline and go over to the left side now. 
and reach long with that right hand. On the inhale, reach up that right hand a couple of inches off the mat and then come back down again and sink into that stretch on the right side. And then we're gonna come back to the midline, come back onto tabletop, and we're gonna come into our two minute plank and then we're gonna do a little bit more in our tabletop. So if you need to get rid of the, something to pad your knees, then do that. I'm gonna queue up our, our timer. Today, you can come into your forearm plank. Remember, we're coming in, first we start off by measuring our shoulders and then we can come into our forearm plank here, pretending I'm on the floor, or you can be in your straight arm plank. I'm gonna try for straight arm plank today. That's how I'm gonna do it. But you go the way that you wanna go. Remember, you can always drop a knee down, then come back up again. So let's all set ourselves up. So if you're in forearm plank or you're in straight arm plank, start to take one foot out and then the other. I'm starting the clock now. And then for all of us, scoop the tailbone under. So first start off with butt high. Scoop the tailbone under so you're engaging your core. Then start to drop the, the, the pelvis down toward the floor. If you're in a straight arm plank, you're gonna start to rock your weight up onto the feet, on the ball of the feet. Now let's look back at our toes. Splay the toes out. So like the toes are completely fanned and you're looking back at your toes and you're realizing how strong you are and you're already 30 seconds in. And our hands are fanned out in front of us. We feel the points of contact that our body is making as we're breathing, breathing in and breathing out. Our neck is long. We notice what's happening also as we start to maybe not engage the core. So maybe we're tucking that tailbone under and scooping and hollowing out the belly a little bit more. So we're really engaging the core and we're past a minute already. Ready, we're starting to head into our two minutes. Inhaling and exhaling. And remember, if you start to get bored, you can take one foot off and hold it. And breathe. And then take the other off and hold it. And breathe. And we're already a minute and a half in. We're almost done. Strength and endurance. We've got this. And then remember to hollow out that belly a little bit more. Breathing in, I have arrived. Breathing out, I am enough. Inhaling. Arrive. Exhaling. Enough. Keep pushing away from the floor. You've got this. And we're done with our two minutes. Come on down. Take your elbows out toward the edges of the mat. Great job and wonderful inspiration. Thank you all. Take your head down on the mat. We're resting here. It's time for a rest. We're taking our forehead down on the mat. We're taking a little shimmy of the hips from side to side, allowing the belly to just settle, the, the shoulders to settle. Take a little circle of the wrist, if you're on your wrist, or any other movement that you need. And then we're gonna take our left foot, shoelaces part of that left foot off the mat. So we're gonna take a little rest, but keep moving and pulse for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Flex your foot and pulse for six, five, four, three. Squeeze your left butt cheek, two, and one. Bend your left knee, take the left knee off the mat and pulse for six, five, four, three, two, one. Switch it out, left foot comes off the mat. We're gonna pulse for six. Engage your butt muscle, five, Four, three, two, and one. Flex your foot and pulse for six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend your right knee, keep it up and pulse it for six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on down, shimmy your hips a little from side to side. So you're gonna give your lower back, a nice stretch. We're gonna come up now. So, so fan the hands.
Take them under the shoulders. We're gonna stretch here. Take your elbows in towards your midline. So like you're gonna push yourself up and then we're gonna do that. Push yourself up, we're coming into upward facing dog. Squeeze your butt cheeks so you protect your lower back. And then gently and slowly come into tabletop and then either into child's pose or on a hot sauna, keeping butt high and sinking the heart low. Just stretching and coming into a counter pose of what we were just in. And for anybody in child's pose who want to keep, keep their knees hip width distance apart, you could do that too. Lots of options here, depending on what your body type is and how you present today on this day 25. And then let's come back into tabletop and grab our weights. So I'm gonna pad my knees again and get ready with our low and high weight. <clears throat> I'm grabbing my, uh, my high weight. I'm gonna have my left hand on a block so that I have some height here. And that way we can start to do those grocery lifts. So the hand, right hand is right underneath the shoulder. I'm hugging the elbow in. So as I'm pulling up, I'm protecting my shoulder as I'm coming up to pull. So let's go for 10 and nine, eight. And we're breathing here, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna slow the tempo and we're gonna go for one, hold it, and down, and go for one and hold it, and down. Six more. Five. Neck is long, four, hug it in. Three. Now we're going to be pushing it back in just a minute. Two. So if you need to grab your low weight, it's cool. One. And now let's bring it up. And now we're going to shoot it back and hold it. And then draw it in. And shoot it back. And draw it in. Engage your core. Take your navel back towards your spine. Remember, you can change out your weights. Draw it back and draw it in. Bring it back and draw it in. Last one and draw it in and come down. Great job, come off of your hands. We're on our knees. Inhale, draw it up. Circle the wrist, take a break. Reach up and extend, clasp the fingertips together. So we were doing this a lot last night. We're gonna tuck the tailbone under. We're engaging our core here. There's a huge theme, right? Core is so integral. And now you're gonna paint a circle on the ceiling. So we're just stretching. And you might notice as you make that revolution and head over toward the left side of the mat, oh, I feel my shoulder. I feel my arm that we were just working, right? Let's go in the opposite direction. And again, oh, that feels good. Reach and extend, take your right arm, bring it down, keep your left arm high. We're stretching, inhale, and let's head over to the right side. Exhale down. Inhale, both arms coming up. Exhale down your left. Rise up. Let's head over to the left side. Come on up as we inhale. Exhale down. So you know where we're gonna go. Bring the, right, the block over to the right side of the mat. Your weight's in your left hand. I'm gonna move over this way so that we can see what we're doing here. And then let's set ourselves up. That weight is right underneath our shoulders. We've engaged our core, inhaling and exhaling, drawing, keeping that elbow right in line with the body. And then we're gonna lift up and then come down. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slow the tempo down. Six, five. So you hold it when you come up. Four, three, three. 
two. You can reset your knees, reset your breath. One. Draw it up and now bring it back, hold it, and then curl it. Bring it back and curl. Breathe and curl it. See what's happening in your pelvic floor when you're doing this? You're letting everything loose or, or tighten it. Just notice, curl it. One more and curl it. Great job. Come on down, come off of your hands. We're going to stretch one more time. Reach up and extend. Clasp the fingertips together. Steeple chasing them up toward the ceiling. Make a revolution. And as you come over toward the right side of the mat, uh, maybe you feel that. And then make that in the opposite direction. We're gonna come right back down to keep working. And then come on down. Great job. So now we're gonna take that left weight, actually right, take the, the weight to your right hand, right corner of the mat, and then kind of like a lawnmower pull. So we're gonna be here. And then we're going to come up and then come back. So lower high weight. So I've got my, my hand extended. I'm going to pull forward, like I'm going to pull a lawnmower, right? Uh, start an old fashioned lawnmower. And then I'm going to come back and then come curl up. And then I'm going to push to the corner. So that's the motion. Let's go. Pull it up. Draw it back. Curl it up. Bring it out front. We're going to go six more times. Draw it up. Curl it back. Draw it up and push it out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Draw it up, bring it back, curl it up, push it up. Two more. Come back and push it up. Last one. Draw it back, curl it up, and push it out. Switch it out to the other side, right over the other side. Left hand. Draw it up, elbow in, push it back. Curl it up, push it out. Five more. Four more. Three more. Two. One, great job. Come off your hands, come into camel. So remember, you can tuck your toes or keep your shoelaces part of your feet. We're just stretching. We're gonna inhale, left arm's gonna come up. Again, tuck that tailbone under, so you're squeezing your butt cheeks together, you're engaging your core, and then you can windmill that hand and bring it to the back pocket, or you can take your hand to your heel, your choice. Right arm's gonna come up, we're stretching. So either you're here or you're here. Find that stretch, take a look up with gratitude toward the ceiling. Windmill the arms. Let's go over to the other side. Inhale, right arm's coming up. We're gonna windmill it behind us and either stick it in our back pocket, the hand, or reach for the heel. Rise up with that left arm, we're just stretching. <clears throat> And then draw both arms up, tuck the tailbone under, engage your core, squeeze your back cheeks together as you inhale, reach out long ways. Then you give somebody a hug and we're stretching. We're gonna to start to round the back. That should feel really good as you bring the arms in. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, come down. Last time. Inhale and exhale. Just roll the shoulders back. Take a circle with the head. 
We're going to be coming up to standing. Find your low weights toward the top of your mat so we can add load to the postures as we come in and out of our warriors. We're going to start off by coming into downward facing dog. Again, just stretching as we lengthen the arms. I really want you to plant your hands, kind of hug the elbows in toward the body as you extend. That gives you a bigger, stronger base for those upper body arms that you can come into your downward facing dog in a safe and supportive way. So take the hand starfish in front of you, tuck the toes under. We're gonna take the hips up toward the ceiling. So on this first one, your hamstrings might be really tight. So you're gently bending your knees as you stick your butt up toward the air. Set your hands up. So maybe you take a look towards your hands or maybe you have your, hand, your head down with the gaze toward the middle of the mat. And then you can maybe widen the stance by taking one foot out longer and then the other toward the back of your mat and then start to bring your heels down. So here you are in your downward facing dog. Remember you could do this with hands from the chair or maybe you're not even into this at all. And so you're just coming up and you're standing in Tadasana and you're practicing your Tadasana by tucking your tailbone under. So we have lots of ways to still be present and be together in our practice. And we're breathing here. You can come up onto the ball of the feet if you're in downward facing dog. You could shift your weight and come back into that plank pose if you wanted. Maybe even dipping the hip down just for a little bit of a counter stretch and then pushing back up. Again, lots of ways to access this posture. If you're here in downward facing dog, lift your left leg up. If you're breathing and yawning open with that left leg, point and flex. And then on the exhale, bring it down, bring that right foot up, point and flex, and then bring that right leg down. And then gently, so like you're gonna leap, leap yourself forward, we're gonna just bend the knees and then start to walk the feet toward the hands. Inhale to a half lift, hands come to the shins. A gentle bend in the knee, but we feel the backs of the hamstrings. You can even let your fingers kind of linger down towards your ankles. So maybe you're getting a deeper stretch and we're gonna grab those low weights as we gently start to roll our bodies up. And then we're gonna come into the Tadasana with all of us together as we roll the shoulders back. We have a gentle bend in the knee. We've tucked the pelvis under, so we're squeezing the butt cheeks together and our top torso is, our torso is getting a little longer. And we're just gonna stand here for a moment and find stillness and ease, stira and sukha, as we come into Tadasana, our mountain pose, our place of strength. Inhaling, we are mountains and exhaling. Roll the shoulders back. So you open up the chest. We're gonna inhale with the arms coming up. So we're adding load coming into our regular warrior postures. Our arms are coming down together, so we're gonna take our forearms together. Here they are. <clears throat> Tuck the tailbone under, and let's pulse for 10, nine, eight, if this feels uncomfortable, don't do it. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're coming out, because this is gonna be our move, and we're gonna come back in. So here we are. Let's come out and in. Three, two, one. Draw it down, roll it back, inhale, exhale. Let's go. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands to prayer, right knees coming up and we're holding it, finding something non-moving in front of us. Fan the toes of that left foot out. We're kickstanding or we have that right knee up to hip height. Inhale as we take our left leg longer. Exhale, kick out and hold it for three. Engage your core, two and one. Draw it back. Now we're touching back, not down, and holding it for three. Engage your core, two, one. Now touch down. Draw the arms up. Inhaling so you're in your warrior, one. The left foot's over toward the left side of the mat now, so you have a bigger base. That right foot's about 45 degrees. And from that right pinky toe, start to squeeze and start to engage the back right leg. Inhale and exhale, squeeze that right butt cheek. Just feel strength and stability. 
And then cactus arm the arms so you know the move that we're gonna make now. Open up the chest as you inhale. On the exhale, draw it in. And then come out. And we're going for 10, nine. Like you're gonna drag your arms through water. Slow tempo. And seven, six, five, engage your core, two, one. Keep that stance, draw the arms down, and now we're gonna curl up and back. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Track that left knee in toward the midline. Take your left hand down to the top of the thigh. That right arm's curling up. We're leaning forward into that left knee. If there's no pain there, do it. Remember, we practice ahimsa. We do no harm to our bodies. We're coming back and we're pulsing for six, five, four, three. It's kind of a version of a humble warrior, two, and one. Curl it up and draw it back. And let's go for six, five, four, three. Gonna feel that in your knee, we're firing it up. Two, one, bring the body up, reach up, we're gonna stretch. Start to straighten out that left leg, uh, and then take that right arm down. Okay, and then we're gonna come over for a stretch. Let's come on back, reach up, inhale. On the exhale, okay, push off, right foot comes to meet the left, I'm in a tiny, tight corner. Inhaling in, and exhaling, Tadasana. All right, we're gonna liven this, this up. Ready? Reach up and extend. We're gonna exhale, hands to prayer, our left knee's coming up. Challenging ourselves to keep that left foot knee up to hip height. Grow a little taller on that right side as you inhale in and exhale out. We're fanning the toes of that right foot out. So we're gonna go right over to the other side, up this other side to go in and do what we gotta do. Kick out that left foot. We're gonna hold it for three and two, and one, bend the knee, and then we're gonna to touch it back and hold it for three, let the toes be down. You're in your warrior three posture, and one, and then touch it down, reach up, good deep inhale here, you know where we're gonna go. Take the right foot over toward the right side of the mat, let the left pinky toe guide you as you start to tighten up and hinge into that right knee. You might wanna even broaden the distance, Reach up and now cactus arm. Open up the chest, inhaling. And then as we exhale, let's bring it together for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Squeeze your left butt cheek. Two and one. Great job. <clears throat> and then come on down and then curl up for six, five. Hug your elbows in. Four, three, two, and one. Right hand to right top of thigh. Left hand comes up for the curl and down. Curl it up and then down. So we're leaning into this curl, and down, curl it up, and down. Now we're gonna add to that, curl it up, and draw it all the way back and pulse for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold it, and then come on in. Reach up, inhaling. Exhale down, just your left arm. Start to straighten out that right leg. Flex the right foot, we're stretching. Come on over. And then come on back, inhale. As you exhale, push off. Left foot comes to meet the right, inhaling in. And exhaling in, Tadasana. We're gonna grab our high weights. <clears throat> Here we are. Our feet are about hip width distance apart. Gentle bend in our knee. We tuck the tailbone under and we're engaging our butt muscles and our core. 
And let's go for 10, nine, eight, seven, we're curling, six, five, four, reset your butt and your, your core, three, if you need to, two, and one. Now we're gonna alternate, one, and two. And we're breathing. If you need to reset your shoulders, go. And four. Five. And six. Now, just like we were doing when we were seated, and I'm gonna back up, hopefully not get on the block. I have a bend more in my knees. So I'm firing up my quadriceps. Remember chair pose? You can get low if you want to. You can scoop up and hollow out. So here you are. And now we're gonna push up and pulse for three, two, one, and bring it down. So we're firing up the quads and we're firing up the top. One, and come down and pulse up for three, two, one, keep those knees hip width distance apart. Go as low as you want. Two, one, come down. We're doing three more. Two, one, and down. Three, two, one, and down. Two more, three, two, one, and down. Three, two, one. Come down, go lower if you want to. This is your last one. Make it big, make it count. And up, two, one, and down. <clears throat> I'm gonna come up on my knees, off my knees, take a breath and reset. And then I'm coming back and I'm gonna tuck and then I'm gonna pull up and then come down. And I'm pulling it up and then I'm coming down. 10, nine, go low, eight, seven, six, neck is long, five, don't knock your teeth out through your face, four, three, almost dead, two, and one. Great job, grab your low weights. Straight arm raises. So again, you can have that bend if you want. I'm firing up my quadriceps, engaging, and I'm coming up and down. Six, five, fan the toes out. Four, three, two, one. I'm gonna straighten out, gentle bend in the knee though, and I'm coming out and I'm gonna pulse for six. Five, four, three, two, one. This is oddly familiar to our beginning of our exercises. Yep, we're taking our weights out. We're gonna keep them vertical and we're gonna pulse forward for six. Five, four, three, two, one. Weights come up, we're holding them in our hands and we're gonna pulse up and down, six. Five, four, if you need to take a break, you will. Two, oh, three, two, and one. Come on down, Ooh, roll the shoulders back and forward. We're coming straight out and then coming back down. Come in for six, five, four. Breathing, three. We got this. Two and one. Awesome. Roll the shoulders back and forward. Great job. We're coming down to the floor. You can drop your weights, but have them close by because we're going to do a couple more things on our mats, on our backs. So let's go. Inhale, draw it up. Good deep inhale. As we exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a half lift. 
and exhale to come on down onto your backs. We made it. Come on down, roll over onto your backs and hug your knees in toward your chest. Take a little rock back and forth from side to side. What a great job. You should be really proud of yourself. On your backs, we feel the spine as you roll back and forth. Let's just hug our right knee in toward our chest, extend our left leg long, and just press that left calf down onto the mat. You can flex that left foot, take a circle of that right ankle and left ankle. Take your right knee across your chest and just cactus arm the arm, stretching and resting for just a quick minute before we finish strong. Good belly breath, in and out. Draw that right knee in and let's switch it out. Take that left knee in, extend the right leg long. <sighs> Breathing, circling the ankles. Left knee is coming across the body and we're gonna cactus arm that left arm, let the left shoulder head rest on the mat. Gaze comes toward that left shoulder. Stretching, relaxing into the mat. <clears throat> and then we're going to come back and we're going to grab our high weights and we're going to do a couple of push, uh, pushing up toward the ceiling. So let the backs of the forearms rest on the mat. Come out, like you have chicken wings, have them out on the uh, edges so the elbows come out toward the edges of the mat. And now we're pushing up and coming back. So we're doing like a bench press. Now, set yourself up, flatten that lower back, hollow out the belly, you're using your core, and then notice the power that you get as you push up. It changes it considerably when, you're, when you've got that core strength to power those weights coming up. You've got your high weights or your low weights, whatever you wanna do, but that lower back is flattened in. We've curled our tailbone under, we've hollowed out our belly, and we're using our core strength to power this weight forward and we're feeling this really strong upper body and we're breathing and breathing. And let's go for three more and two more, one more. Bring it down, now we're gonna curl it up. This is the last thing, so hug your weights in and curl it up and come down, back down. Now notice what's happening. Did you just let that lower S curve start to happen in the back? Start to scoop that tailbone under. So you're pressing in with the feet. The knees are still hip width distance apart and you're using your core strength to draw the weights up in that curl. And we're gonna go six more and we're almost done. Five, four, three, two, and one. Great job. Move the weights out of the way. Grab your tennis ball. And we're going to come into doing a little bit of exercise with our tennis ball. <laughs> and as we're on our backs, we're going to take the tennis ball right to the mediastinum, right in the middle of our chest. And we're going to roll that tennis ball with the palm of our hand loving kindness to ourselves. You can let the lower back now settle into however you'd like it to be, but you still feel your feet flat on your mat. And we're gonna to start to circle that ball over toward the left shoulder. So that, that place that I was showing you earlier in between the top of your breast and the shoulder head, there's a little notch in there, like get in there with the ball and really feel that and see if you're able to relax that muscle because that really helps with shoulder health. And then as you're ready, you can start to take the ball up to the top of the neck, right from the nape of the neck, coming to the top of the shoulder and you can massage your shoulder that way there. Or even bring the ball out along the arm of all the muscles that you were just working. And then remember, you have that option then to then take the ball and place it right underneath your shoulder and just allow your body to rest on the ball. So you get that trigger point, whatever, wherever you kind of hold your tension, you may find it. 
with just taking, I'm gonna take my weight and just put it right underneath my shoulder. That kind of digs in a little deeper. And we breathe here, just allowing our bodies to melt over onto the ball. And you can move the ball. So remember also, I, I showed you this once before. So I've got my knees bent for a reason. If I wanted to move my ball down to my lower or mid back, I can take my buttocks a couple of inches off the mat and then just kind of sway my butt from side to side, my hips from side to side. And that allows that ball to then give me a nice massage on the lower back or the sacrum area. So there's lots of options here. And I show you all these also because as you're practicing daily or you're incorporating other forms of movement into your practice, like running or walking uh, or, you know, however, whatever you are, riding your bike, then maybe you come back and you do a little bit of either foam rolling or using the ball to really get into these areas. So the other thing you can do too, is you can take the ball and if you use the location of your butt cheek, and then you come out to the right part of your hip, right? Just, it's just on the outside part of your butt cheek. You've got that little divot area there. You can start to put the ball there and then just use that right hip or left hip to kind of get into that area as well. And that's another thing you can do too, because that way our hips get really tight. And so that's a really nice way to be able to massage, do self-massage essentially. All right, enough talking. We're going to head back over with our ball back to that mediastinal area right in the right in the center of our chest. And we're going to take the ball now in our left hand and then start to move over to, sorry, yeah, and we're starting to move over to the right side of our body. And again, we're going to find that little notch just above and to the right of the breast in between that and the shoulder and really give that a good massage. You can even take your forefinger and thumb and you could give it that muscle grouping a little pinch kind of right underneath the armpit. And that might give you a little release too, a little trigger release. And then, you know, bring the ball to where it feels good to you on this side. And now you can go straight back to the back of your, your shoulder if you want to, or your lower back and just, Enjoy the self-massage and offer up some loving kindness to your body as you massage your body. Thank you, body, for moving and breathing and being so strong and doing a two-minute plank and lifting weights and making a connection with my brain to be able to do those things and allowing my breath to be able to be my guide. Never want to take those things for granted, especially since they can be taken away in a flash. Breathing here. And then when you've had enough of that, we're going to come in, draw your knees in towards your chest, and let's come into Shavasana. We're going to go a couple minutes over today, so just so you know, just a couple minutes over. Coming into your Shavasana, find your rest if you haven't already found that. And find a little stillness. Our reading today comes from a local meditator, Tara Brock. So homage to her, which is the sacred art of pausing. So as you breathe in and breathe out, just listening to the words of Tara Brock. On this beautiful day 25, just resting the body. In our lives, we often find ourselves in situations that we can't control. Circumstances in which none of our strategies work. Helpless and distraught, we frankly try to manage what is happening. The more that we feel failure, the more frenetically our bodies and minds begin to work. We fill our days with continual movement, mental planning, worrying, habitual talking, fixing, scratching, 
adjusting, phoning, snacking, discarding, buying, looking in the mirror. What would it be like if right in the midst of this busyness, we were to consciously take our hands off the controls? What if we were to intentionally stop our mental computations and our rushing around for a minute or two? Simply pause and notice our inner experience. Learning to pause is the first step in the practice of radical acceptance. A pause is a suspension of activity, a time of temporary disengagement, when we're no longer moving towards any goal. The pause can occur in the midst of an almost any activity we encounter. It can last for an instant, or for hours, or for seasons of our lives. We may take a pause from our ongoing responsibilities by practicing yoga, by sitting down to meditate. We may pause in the midst of this to let go of thoughts and reawaken our attention to our breath gratitude for that. We may pause by stepping out of a daily life to go on a retreat or spend time in nature or take a sabbatical or take a ride. We may pause in a conversation to let go of what we're about to say in order to genuinely listen and be with the other person. We may pause when we feel suddenly moved or delighted or saddened, allowing the feelings to play through our heart. In a pause, we simply discontinue whatever we were doing, thinking, talking, walking, writing, planning, worrying, eating, and become wholeheartedly present, attentive, and often physically still. A pause is by nature time limited. We resume our activities, but we do so with increased presence and the ability to make choices. By disrupting our habitual behaviors, we open to the possibility of new and creative ways of responding to our wants and our fears. Taking our hands off the controls and pausing is an opportunity to clearly see the wants and fears that are driving us. During the moments of a pause, we become conscious of how that feeling something might be missing or wrong. It keeps us leaning into the future on our way somewhere else. But it gives us a fundamental choice in how we respond. We can continue our futile attempts at managing our experience, or we can meet our vulnerability with the wisdom of radical acceptance. Often the moment when we most need to pause is exactly when it feels the most intolerable to do so. Pausing in a fit of anger, or when overwhelmed by sorrow, or filled with desire, may be the last thing that we want to do. Pausing can feel like falling helplessly through space. We have no idea what will happen. We fear that we might be engulfed by the rawness of our rage, our grief, or desire. Yet without opening to the actual experience of the moment, radical acceptance is not possible. 
through the sacred art of pausing. We develop the capacity to stop hiding, to stop running away from our experience. We begin to trust in our natural intelligence, in our naturally wise heart, in our capacity to open to whatever arises, like awakening from a dream in the moment of pausing, our trance recedes and radical acceptance becomes possible. Take a good breath in, and as you breathe out, start to take some movement to your fingers and to your toes. Wake the body back up and roll yourself over to your right or your left side. Today is going to be a good day. With your eyes closed or your gaze soft, we bring our bodies up. Strength on this day 25. Peace to you all in this day, this weekend. That sacred art of pausing that we might notice as we move through our day today. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace. Peace to you. With a good deep inhale in, let's exhale, bowing together. The light in me honors and sees the light in you. Namaste.